Everyone talks about physical health and mental wellness, but what is spiritual health? How are we to nurture the soul and nourish that higher self? In fact, what is spirituality? Is it lighting a candle at an altar, counting the beads of a rosary, going to church, a synagogue, a mosque, doing puja, or offering namaz five times a day? Following the rituals of our faith certainly gives us a sense of identity, belonging, familiarity, and comfort. But is ritual the same as spirituality? Hello, my friends, welcome. Sit down, relax, join me for a cup of tea or any beverage of your choice while we discuss how to be spiritually healthy. So is ritual the same as spirituality? Well, yes and no. Not religious rituals, but rituals of another kind are also a form of spirituality. Rituals such as giving thanks, morning meditation, resolving to be a better person and connecting to the power bigger than us all. For instance, when I sing, <laughs> this is a ritual of sorts, but it is also a profoundly spiritual and uplifting experience for me. So spirituality, like many religions, is both very personal and it's something we practice with our chosen community as well. And it is also scientific. Spirituality and spiritual health is something that people are doing a lot of research into right now. Isn't that just so exciting? There are several different facets of our spiritual self and many disciplines make up what we call spirituality. Theology, philosophy, ethics are all constituents of spirituality. So are medicine, psychiatry, and physical well-being. Spirituality has a significant role to play in healthcare. Spiritual people have more evolved souls and they are better connected to their inner selves. They tend to be calmer, healthier, happier, and also live longer. In the field of medicine, healthcare professionals now aim to heal not only the physical body, but also serve the emotional, social, and spiritual needs of a person. Have you read the book, Kitchen Table Wisdom, Stories That Heal by Rachel Naomi Remen? Well, in it, she tells us true stories about mysterious healing, faith, love, and medical miracles. These are stories of courage, resilience, and spontaneous healing from life-threatening conditions. They tell us about a core of inner strength that we all have, which helps us overcome adversity in ways we couldn't even imagine. Our soul is capable of things beyond our understanding. Our soul's true manifesto is beyond our imagination. Another definition of spirituality commonly expressed is a journey that is the unlearning of fear and the acceptance of love. I love that one. The unlearning of fear and the acceptance of love. Doesn't that just sound like what we should all be doing? Being spiritually healthy could just be me having a productive, stress-free, happy day. On the other hand, someone may look happy and healthy on the face of it, but may not really be spiritually healthy at all. It could all be a facade. It could even be medication. It could be denial. It could be a well-rehearsed role they've been playing to hide their feelings, even though the acting and the hiding is just amplifying their fears internally. Being spiritually healthy would mean having a certain sense of self, a calm equanimity. The spiritual journey is about learning to forgive yourself, letting go of the guilt. It's about quieting the inner critic that makes us constantly question and doubt ourselves, our abilities and our decisions. In fact, I've created a guided meditation just to help you recognize and realize this inner critic. Do check it out if that's an area you're struggling with. The evolving spirit learns to take negative emotions such as anger and frustration and channels them in a way that are positive rather than self-destructive. It is an acceptance that none of us is perfect and that it is perfectly fine to be imperfect. What is spiritual health? It is about overcoming that daily struggle, the petty problems that keep us confined in our victimhood instead of appreciating all that is good in life. If you're not engaged in fight, flight, or freeze every day, I would say you're pretty good. Being constantly in a state of fight, flight, or freeze 
can release more cortisone and keep our heart rate elevated. We all know that's not good for us. And even if you are caught up in that daily struggle of fight, flight, or freeze, that's okay too. We all learn to be true to ourselves, to discover inner strength that we didn't know we had. That really is why we have these chats, you and I, where I share a little bit of my everyday wisdom with you and you maybe leave me a comment or a question. So being spiritually healthy could mean different things to different people. But for me, spirituality is that which helps us discover our true purpose in life. It helps us to be by ourselves and lets us be by ourselves. We learn to enjoy our own company. We develop a strong and clear sense of what is wrong and right. We find the strength to be our true to ourselves and our belief system. We are able to stand by and stand up for what we believe in. We give gratitude. This is one of my favorite daily rituals. I make sure to do it every morning, sometimes even at night. Giving gratitude, acknowledging the abundance we have in our lives, recognizing that we are a small cog in the mighty wheel of the universe, and as such, we must do our bit for the world. Another big part of being spiritually healthy is empathy, where we understand the compulsions that people operate with, where we learn to forgive and move on. So then, what are a few ways in which I assess my spiritual health? and you can as well. Ask yourself a few questions that I sometimes introspect with. Number one, do I take the time to be out in nature? Do I walk, go cycling or trekking? Do I simply enjoy the sight of the trees, the magnificent sky, the wind rushing through my hair? Number two, do I take the time to just be without hurtling from one to another chore, rushing from one deadline to another, taking care of the 101 things that need my attention every day. <laughs> Number three, do I often switch off or at least put my phone on silent? How often do I disconnect, detach, and go off grid? Am I able to do this without feeling anxious and that sense of FOMO? Number four, do I ponder about the meaning of life and sometimes surrender to a power greater than myself. Because I know that there is a universal power out there looking out just for me. Number five, do I actively practice kindness and compassion? It could be for an injured bird, a homeless person, or I could volunteer my time at a nonprofit trying to eradicate malaria in Africa. It could be something as simple as cooking a meal for a neighbor who is ill or putting a bowl of water out for the birds in the summer. Number six, do I sometimes simply marvel at the stunning sunrise or soaring sounds of musical arrangement? All of these simple miracles of life. If you answer yes to all or several of these questions, rest assured you're in good spiritual health. To find out more about uplifting your spiritual health, your creativity, and your existence all together, click the link in the description below. If you're wondering what is spiritual health, I hope this episode has answered your question. If you enjoyed this chat, hit the subscription button and don't forget to also click the bell icon so you don't miss our future chats. I look forward to our next chat together. Remember, my dear friends, the spirit is love and love is spirit. And when we are in good spiritual health, we are filled with unabounded love. Namaste, my friends. Namaste. Thanks for watching. Don't miss out on a single thing. Subscribe below. And here's something else I think you'll enjoy. Namaste.